Hello again to uh, another great episode of uh, Our Texas Magazine, the podcast. Uh, of course, we have uh, Shawana, the co-host, and uh, Mr. Foster, our producer. And today, we have <laughs> Dominique Merrill. Uh, uh, what city? San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, okay. And so she's got a great company called uh, Melanin Queen D. Yes. She's going to let us know about what she she produces, kind of like um, uh, how the beginnings of a company before it makes its billions. Huh? How about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let's have a disclosure. Uh, both uh, the host, uh, Miss Riley, and uh, Miss Merrill have a familial uh, connection, so we'll get to that later. But um, <laughs> Uh, uh, let us know a little bit about how you began the company. All right. So I kind of just did it because I saw a bunch of other females and women just doing it themselves. And I thought, why not? Let me try. <laughs> As I was going, just because I was going to school and I just thought that's the only thing I was doing daily, just going to school. Mm -hmm. coming. So I decided to do something that I would like. So I started my business. How long ago? Um, it's going to be a year in August. I started August of last year. Okay. So uh, where are you going to school? San Antonio, I know, but... I'm going to Texas A&M San Antonio. Okay. So so you were uh, a, a junior at the time, a sophomore? Or... Well, I was. I got my associates in December of 2020 at St. Philip's College. Now I'm going to my bachelor's in communications. At okay. okay. St. Philip's is a great college. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so you you had just finished uh, St. Phillips and started. I was on I was on my way to finishing St. Phillips. So, you know, my parents' concern was starting this business, and because I didn't tell them, but starting the business and trying to get my schoolwork done. But I let them know that you know it's just a little side hobby. But then it ended up becoming something I really wanted to. Do. Yeah. Oh, okay, so Dominique, I have a question. How did you decide? what kind of products you are going to have in your business because you are you have and you know a familiar relationship can i can i say who she is to me can i say who she is to me? okay all right so she she is one of my nieces um and as long as i've known her all her life she's always been very creative um, when she was younger, she painted and she drew colors and, and I actually still have some of that stuff. I was cleaning up my garage and I found some stuff you did back in the day. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you when I come down one time. Um, so, so she's always been creative. So it didn't surprise me that she would do something like that because she does makeup online and she does, you know, the eyelashes and, you know, the, eye makeup and all the other stuff. So it's not surprising to me that she does things that are creative. So how did you decide what you were gonna do with your business? So at first I was just like, I like lip gloss, I like eyelashes. So I said, okay, when I first started, I did beauty bundles, which you would just get lashes, scrunchies, lip gloss like that. But mm -hmm. the thing about doing a business, you have to do things that you like don't do things that other people like or you think other people would like and i'm just now learning that myself because throughout my business i was like okay i'm gonna do something different every single month i was doing lashes bundles one month and then doing this another month but now i'm starting to realize i need to do something that i like you know kids are into anime and stuff i know nothing about <laughs> same here <laughs> at, at first i well, not at first, but I tried to do like anime stuff. I had my brother try to help me because he's into that. But I realized I shouldn't try to sell something that I know nothing about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started. So now I'm doing self-defense keychains. And it has probably, it made my business skyrocket. Self-defense change is what really got me known. Yes, the bundles at first they were doing it, but you know, you have slow months. There was probably about two, three months where I didn't sell anything. And months where I felt like I wanted to give up and there's no point that, you know, 
my mom, my Nana, they told me to keep going. So I decided, okay, let me try to do something. And y'all, it was my money invested. It was a risk because it was like, okay, you know, I'm a college student. I have books to pay for, but let me just go ahead and try it. And I tried it. So now my self-defense keychains are what's really um, selling right now. Okay. Okay. So that is interesting, Dominique. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you come up with the self-defense part to mm -hmm. go with the screen? How did you do that? So the self-defense chains, I, I wanted to do the idea at first, but then I saw obviously a lot of other women doing it. And I thought it probably wouldn't sell because they're doing it and theirs looked better. But I was just like, you're always going to have someone that does the same thing as you. Yeah. There's not going to be one thing that someone hasn't already thought of that you think of. So I decided just to do it. And I realized like, you know, women, they need protection, especially going like what we've been going through lately. Like we just need protection. So I decided, and I wanted to keep, you know, when my mom goes out by herself, when my Nana goes out by herself, you know, my aunts, my cousin, I, I wanted them to be and feel protected. So I decided to do myself through, Fence keychains and me as well, but yeah. Uh, Mr. Foster, can you bring up one of the the um, photographs so uh, Dominique can can let us know uh, a little bit more about it? Do you recall your first sell? <laughs> yes. What was it like? Um, my first sell was to my mother. <laughs> that counts. Hey, but oh. <laughs> if that counts, but yes, my first sell was to my mom, and then next it was my nana, and then my aunts. Yeah. So it was just you know family at first, and then I had some friends, but also you have to realize when starting a business, not all your family and not all the friends that you know are going to. Yeah. How about the first sale to someone you did not know? How? Was that totally online or what? Well, at first I did not have a website for my business. Okay. I was posting it on like Instagram and Facebook and saying, okay. I have oh. this, or I have that. But I believe my first sale that wasn't family was my best friend, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. she te she's family, but not really family it was my best friend Alyssa, and she had bought one of my bundles and then it started being like my sister's friends and i started selling so when i first started i did sell quite a bit of bundles i i sold a lot okay um how um how long did it take you to to put these um these um you know the is it a wristband is it a is it a necklace or so this so the self-defense keychain it is a lot to put together because you have to I have to go out, go to different websites, try to find what I need for it. And mm -hmm. not everything for the self-defense chain comes like you can get some things in bundles so I don't have to buy a lot or some things are by themselves. Okay. So it takes a lot because I have to wait when someone makes an order. I have to I order as I go because I've had I've had some um, cases where the person would say, okay, I wanted this. I would go ahead and order it. And then they would say, oh, I don't have the money now. Can I get it like next week? So now I'm stuck with products that I wasted my money on. So now with the self-defense keychains, I order as I go. So when they order, it takes a while for it to come in sometimes. Sometimes the wrong thing might come in and have to send it back. So it's just a process. So when it comes to my keychain, I tell the customers that buy it to at least give me like a week, a week and a half, plus the shipping. Because sometimes shipping doesn't always go as right either. <laughs> so you okay. inventory low. Yes. Okay. 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 So, so Dominique, I I have a question about um, how you're selling it outside of social media because I noticed a few weeks ago you had a pop up shop. Yes. Um, and I noticed because I, you know, she's all, um, we follow each other on social media and I noticed she did that on, on Facebook and I was like, oh, cool. So are you, are you going to be doing more things like that to, um, to kind of get the word out about your product? Yes, I want to do more because that was my very first one since I started my business. That was, I believe, last month that it happened because it was an event that my sister hosted and she asked if I could do it. And it's a lot of preparation. 
it is not easy because I had to figure out how much I was going to get this, worried about if I got this much, would it sell? And I was nervous at first because at the pop-up shop or at the event, I wasn't selling at first. I sold maybe one, then I sold some lashes. But then afterwards, that's when everyone started to come. And I ended up selling out of all my eyelashes, all my self-defense keychains. And that's when I realized I need to start doing more things like this. So I, I will be doing more pop-up shops in the future. Um, uh, how often do you run across other entrepreneurs in your same age range? Very often. There's yeah. even some that are younger than me trying to do stuff at 11, 12 years old. Oh, yeah, also in a couple of groups on social media, on Instagram, where it's just a group of us on text that we just all have our own... Um, our own companies and give each other business tips and stuff. Okay. Well, um, tell us a little bit about the um, keychain that you have here. What was, uh, you know, what, what was behind your creation here? So this actually was my first custom keychain uh -huh. as compared to the other pictures. If you can see it, the pepper spray on this doesn't have a case and it's kind of blinged out. So this one, the customer wanted royal blue. So this is my first time making a royal blue keychain. Mm -hmm. And I liked it so much, so I made it on the website. So you have, if you see that stick right there, it's kind of, it's a window breaker. It's a window breaker slash self-defense keychain. Like, mm -hmm. you know, someone comes up to you, you can stab them. Or mm -hmm. if you get, locked, <laughs> you get locked in your car, and you can use that window breaker. And then next to it is a door opener because I know sometimes I don't like to touch doors. It'd be nasty, all the germs. Okay. Uh, uh, help me with the thing that's in between the long pointy thing and and the uh, blue cylinder looking thing. What What is that? Yeah. So, yeah, that's the um, that's the door opener right there. The this, door. That gray looking. Uh, yes. The thing that has like a circle kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a door opener. It's like a keychain. And you can open doors with it. You can open your car. If you're going to the store, you can use that to open the door so you don't have to touch it. Wow. wow. And then what? what's the uh, tube light thing? And that is the pepper spray. Oh. The pepper spray is in the middle because I have some that have cases. But in this case, again, this customer wanted something a little, a little extra. So I gave them extra. Uh -huh. so and pepper what, spray. Uh, pepper spray. Um, but now the, the, the blue thing is the pepper spray, isn't it? Yes. Okay. What's the uh, thing to the left of it? So you have, so it's pepper spray and then the left is a lip gloss. Oh, that's a lip gloss? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, and then there's a cotton ball kind of thing. Yes. That's just a little uh, keychain for design. You can take it off or put it on like another keychain. That's just a little design, a little something extra I added. Okay. Um, what do what do customers typically tell you they want, or do you say this is what I offer? Which way does it go? So on the website, you have the option of picking the ones that I sent the pictures. You have that option, or some people I've started doing custom orders, and like recently, a girl wanted an anime self defense keychain. So I asked her, since I don't know nothing about anime, I, asked her, I said, send me animes that you like or what color you want. And she said she wanted it in pink and then the anime. So I ended up getting like the wristlet and then I did everything in pink. And then another one, she liked sunflowers. So I was able to find everything in sunflowers. So it depends. If you want a custom order, it would be wise to um, message me on Instagram or some form of social media so I can do a custom order. Other than that, you can go on the website and just get the regular colors that I have there. Yeah. Um, what's been the most unusual uh, security keychain that you've made? Unusual? Um, it was not unusual, but the I would say the biggest one I guess I made because usually it just comes with the pepper spray. But recently I had a, a old friend, he wanted to get one for his mom. Mm -hmm. so he wanted everything on it. He <laughs> wanted hand sanitizer. He wanted the whistle, the pepper spray. He wanted every single thing on it. Obviously I had to charge him extra because that was a lot. Mm -hmm. but, 
but yeah, that was probably the, like the, I guess the biggest one. And then when I did the pop-up shop, one lady had bought three of them. So as far as um, self defense keychains, that was probably my biggest order with that. But I haven't done any that are like unusual. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dominique, I have a question for you. How are you going to sustain your business um, and then continue on as a college student? Because um, that's a lot, you know, it's the summertime and I know you're taking classes now, but when the fall starts, you'll be taking more classes, yes. doing more homework. Um, you'll be doing more writing because she's a writer as well. And so she's going to be doing writing, hopefully, for that school newspaper. So um, how are you going to balance everything and keep everything going? When I think about it, at first I thought I wouldn't be able to balance it. But I'm actually not that bad when it comes to doing my work, doing the business. I'm actually pretty good as far as school. I like going to school. You know, I like going to school. I like when you come down talking about my grades and my classes and my professors. So I, I feel like I am able to balance both of them. And yes, I'm going to have more classes and more schoolwork. But as long as I focused, which I know I can, I mean, I got one degree down. I can get another one. Okay. All right. Um, how do you handle your social life with your business life? How do you make that blend? Um, I I really don't have a social life like. <laughs> no. Um, this, I mean. It, yes, it, you it, do. I, yes, you do. You do. I, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so as best yeah. as you can have a social life in the middle of a pandemic, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, again, I really don't. You know, I'm not going on campus, so, you know, there's not much I can really do. I mostly stay at home. I mean, I have a friend, but we don't see each other that much. Yeah. But, I mean, my social life and my business life really don't collide like that. So, I mean, I can have a social life. I, ha I have a social life. <laughs> I, have, I have a social life. Well, how about this? But church. You do church stuff. So, oh, you know. Yeah. I enjoy going to church, my church stuff, going um, every Sunday and for practices and stuff. But yeah, my social life really isn't as interesting as business life, I guess. Um, have, have you run across people who want to give you advice, but they've never done it? Um, no, actually, no, I haven't. If I ask for advice, like the groups I'm in, well, all the girls are very sweet because we all know we have a goal that we all want to reach and that's to have a successful business. Uh -huh. So usually, and sometimes they ask me for advice, like as far as building websites and stuff, I give them advice. Or if I ask them like, you know, where you get like your packaging stuff for, they usually, they usually give me good advice. They tell me no one, I've never run across someone that's not like, well, you have to figure it out yourself or, you know, <laughs> I have Across, but I have run across people that are trying to bring me down. So, uh, you, but you put them to the side, right? Yes, I've had a couple of people comment under some of my pictures recently. This one lady commented saying that you could do better. This looks cheap. You know all that stuff. All I did was, you know, press the block button. <laughs> okay, and you know, and you know that that auntie and me now wants to say, now who is that? Um, <laughs> I need to go find them on social media, but no, but you know, that's, that's good that you, that you don't allow, you know, they used to call them the hater, you know, they say shake the haters off of that old song back in the day that you don't allow that because part of kind of putting your vision and your dream out there, whether it's running a magazine, whether it's being a professor or being a writer, it's, you have to prepare yourself for people who are not going to be supportive, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so that's good that you learn that at your age, because once you learn that skill, when people don't like you or don't like your thing, you don't internalize it and you keep keep it moving and you use that as a stepping stone. So, so I think that's that's fantastic. Um, now, I did have a question for you. So in addition to the key chains, do you plan on expanding your business to include other products moving forward? Well, that was kind of the problem when I first started. I was trying to do so much and do so many products. So as far as the keychain, I'm just going to do the things that I like and that I know what 
bring the business money. So I'm going to do keychains and then eventually I'm going to add some eyelashes and it's probably not going to be, and I'll probably do, um, I recently added separate self-defense items. So you don't have to get the whole keychain. So you can go on the website and just get the pepper spray or just get the window breaker. You don't have to get the whole keychain. So I'm probably going to start adding more items like tasers and stuff. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> how did you, um, how did you uh, get so mature so early? Um, I I mean, growing up, I've heard that I was mature for my age. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just why. I don't know. I guess and being surrounded by, you know, all the women in my family, like my auntie, you know, <laughs> having. <laughs> Other auntie or uh, this auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I've just heard I, I've always been mature for my age. Yeah. And I yeah, I guess that that's it. I just there's nothing else to it. I just been very mature for my age. I don't I'm not very I can be childish at times. But well, yeah, but I mean, um, uh, was it that you had folks who talked to you in a more mature way or you just listened to them more or what 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 did it for you? Yes, I, I guess my parents, they never liked, yes, they still kind of think of us as like, you know, their children, they always will. Sure. But yeah, I've had, you know, like my um, Nana, she has always, you know, taught my brother and I and my cousins, you know, different like life lessons. Like once, you know, you're always not going to have your parents or when you get older, you know, you're going to have to learn how to do this and that for yourself. Along, along with my papa as well, he's taught us, you know, we're not always going to have someone there for us. So eventually when it comes down to it, we're going to have to learn how to do things for ourselves. So I guess that's what really made me more mature, knowing that eventually I need to go out into the world and do what I need to do for me and not try to depend on anybody else. Okay. Okay. Um, I had one final question. How about you, uh, Tawanda? You know, it's not a question, but it's actually um, an observation. And I don't know if you, you may or may not remember this, Dominique, but when you were a little girl, like a baby, uh -huh. your, your father, who was in the military, um, came back and he remarked that you were, you were a little baby. And you actually told him at that time, I'm not a baby, I'm a big girl. <laughs> you don't remember that. You may not remember that. <laughs> Ask your parents, ask your parents. But I, I remember that story and it just kind of stayed with me, especially with what um, what you just said about how you've always seen yourself as a big girl. Mm -hmm. You know, you've always seen yourself, even though you're the baby of the family, the youngest child, but that you've always seen yourself as capable of doing your own thing, whether yeah. it's going up down the stairs by yourself or tying your shoes by yourself. Um, but that you've always seen yourself as, as kind of capable and being independent. So that's all I was going to say. Um, that's it. <laughs> uh, uh, Not more quick. <laughs> Mine was, um, what would be at least three things you'd like to let others know if they had an idea, if they wanted to be an entrepreneur? What would be three things that you would want them to know about? I would say that don't don't wait. If you want to do it, just do it. Don't hesitate. If you feel like you would be good at it, just go do it. Because that's what I did. Okay. Two, I would say don't give up because that is the toughest thing about having a business. There will, again, there will be times where you don't make any sales for weeks, for months, or there will be times where people will try to get you down. But I would say don't give up. And then not everyone will support you. Mm -hmm. I even have some family that still haven't bought for me. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, maybe they just don't think that my products will benefit them. I don't know the reason, but don't, I don't have grudges. So it's okay. Maybe they will in the future. But that, and then three, yeah, just don't, don't expect everyone to support you, but just know you will have some supporters. Okay, okay. Well, you know, uh, it, it's really been a pleasure chatting with you, uh, uh, certainly looking at your product. And I hope that uh, others, when they see the, the episode here, uh, they will visit your your either your Instagram or uh, your website. Uh, it, yeah, website, right? Yes. Okay. Give us the website. 
Okay, it's www.melaninqueendy.com. It's simple. Just the name. And what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram? Um, it's just under at underscore melanin queen D. <laughs> okay, underscore melanin queen D. Yes. How did you come up with that name? Oh, that was that was hard coming up with the name because you know you can't just take someone's name. <laughs> it, you can't just take so it was hard at first. I was thinking of just saying queen. I was thinking of just maybe like my initials DM. I didn't, I didn't know, but then melanin, I hear, I hear that a lot just because you know, what means like a darker complexion and skin. And I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm for my sisters. So I said, I'm, I'm gonna make a name that, you know, and obviously other people, of course, but I'm, I'm for my sisters. So I just said melanin queen D and I always refer to myself as a queen. So I said, and then just my my initial so D, and I just put it together, and I was asking my mom, like, do you think that's good? And my friends, and they were like, yeah, that's cute, and I just stuck with it. Okay. Well, I, I tell you, uh, it, it's really been a pleasure to chat with you, uh, to to see the products that you produce. Mm -hmm. I certainly hope that others will uh, see what we see. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I, I know you have a class to go to. What what's the class? What's the class? Media writing. <laughs> oh, <Ooh. laughs> good one. Because let me know. Uh, 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 let, let me let me at least give you this uh, idea. Whatever you learn there will help you whenever you are utilizing your website and want to make sure that you have the right language to reach the audience that you want to reach. So you're oh. you're on it. You're on it. It is. Trust me. It is. <laughs> You know, Dominique, he, he's a professor of, of communications and media. At, oh. at, yes, yes. So when he says that. The fame, the fame is that I know Shawanda Riley. <laughs> I, that's my claim to fame, okay? No. <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Berry has been the publisher of Our Texas for, oh, a long time. Well, maybe as long as you've been alive, Dominique, but it's been an intellectual <laughs> publication. And um, now he teaches people like yourself who are interested in becoming journalists. So, um, so. Well, certainly enjoy to have a chance to talk to you, okay? Thank you so much for having me. Now, now again, we're, we're gonna try to talk to you at, at the halfway part, at the halfway mark, when it's a half a billion or stuff like that, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, look here, again, thanks so much for coming on and, and having a chat with us, all right? You, know, you take care. You right. too. Thank you so right. much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye, Dominique. Bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> ladies.